February 16th, Jonathan Goforth. Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. Goforth was the first missionary from Canada to go to China with his wife. He became the most well known missionary revivalist in the early 20th century and changed the way missionary work was accomplished in China. In 1900, the Boxer Rebellion broke out. A group called the Society of Righteous and Harmonious Fists comprised huge numbers of violent villagers who turned on foreign Christian missionaries and diplomats. They slaughtered 32,000 Chinese Christians and 188 missionaries and their families. Goforth was struck with a sword, but he and Rosalind were able to flee to safety. They finally made it back to Canada. Sadly, once there, Goforth found that the love of the world had invaded many churches, and few people there cared much about the unsaved people in China. But when he returned to China, he met daily with other missionaries to pray for the power of the Holy Spirit. He said, Normal Christianity, as is planned by our Lord, was not supposed to begin in the Spirit and continue in the flesh. In the building of His temple, it never was by might nor by power, but always by His Spirit. On this date, in 1910, Goforth, led 900 people to seek God in prayer. Sometimes the message transforms the messenger. In the late 1880s, Jonathan Goforth and his missionary party traveled through the Chinese mountains to share the message of Jesus with every Chinese person they came across, many of whom had never even heard the name of Jesus. But the road ahead of the missionaries was more than 200 miles long and dangerous. Hudson Taylor wrote to Goforth that where he was headed was one of the most anti-foreign provinces in China. And brother, if you would enter that province, you must go forward on your knees. Goforth did need help, a guide and animals to carry their belongings across the mountains. So they stopped off in a rundown village. In that village, Goforth hired Mr. Dong, an aging, uneducated farmer and his yaks to guide the missionary party across the mountains. Dong had been a part of a traveling theatrical company, lived a low life, and was addicted to opium. But he was happy to take on the work as he had to feed five sons, their wives, children, and some of their grandchildren's wives and their children. Every day, Goforth and his party stopped at noon and at evening to preach to anyone they could find Dong didn't understand much of what these strange foreigners said, except for one thing. Goforth claimed that Dong's gods were not gods at all. Dong was terrified. He began counting down the days until his goddess struck down the whole party for Goforth's blasphemy. As soon as Dong saw Goforth and his team safely to their destination, he fled their company. But a few weeks later, when Dong visited another city, he happened to meet Goforth again, still preaching against the local gods. Nothing had happened to Goforth. Dong started to wonder if Goforth was telling the truth. What if Goforth's God were the real God? After that, Dong took every opportunity to hear what Goforth had to say about Jesus and the Bible. For the first time, Dong felt peace and joy. Fear was gone. Love poured in. When Dong got back to his village, he destroyed his family's idols. His families and neighbors were horrified, and they expected their gods to deliver a painful death to Dong. But it never came. Next, Dong prayed for the freedom from opium, and Dong's new god set him free without the use of medicine. Hungry to know more about his new god, Dong went to the mission. Goforth doubted whether he could teach the very old, illiterate farmer how to read, but Dong was so eager to learn that with God's help, He read through the entire Chinese New Testament in just a few weeks and understood its meaning. A few months later, Dong had mastered all the characters in the Chinese New Testament. Three years later, Dong had profoundly impacted many missionaries and Chinese Christians with his love for Jesus. Although he lacked the education others possessed, 
His beautiful spirit so gentle and so full of love to all with whom he came in contact, won over everyone he met. Goforth didn't hesitate to appoint Dong as an evangelist in his organization, the Canadian Presbyterian Mission. For wherever Dong went, many believed in Jesus. Matthew 5, 16 says, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Are you asking God to bring you divine appointments today? Every new relationship you make is an opportunity to extend the gospel of Jesus Christ to that person and then through that person. Sometimes the message transforms the messenger. I'm pastoring here in Jerusalem with my wife and two children. And today is February 16th, and we're looking at the life of Jonathan Goforth. As I listened to his story today, I was reminded how great an impact our lives have in the lives of other people. This is how God has designed it. God touches people with other people. So Jonathan Goforth's life, his words, his sermons, his messages, his attitudes, his actions, his goals, his mission, all of that God put together in such a way that it impacted many people. But we heard today that it impacted Mr. Dong's life. Mr. Dong's life was so transformed by Jonathan Goforth's message in his life that he came into relationship with the one true God. And this is our challenge for us today, men. How is your life impacting those around you? And who are you intentionally impacting today with the message of who God is, his love for you, his love for them, his salvation in their lives? Who is that that you're impacting today? This is our challenge today. God bless you guys. Have a great day.